Here's a quick update. December 30th, I'm in the plane back to South America. I'm amazed to see the mighty Amazon River flowing through one of the most diverse and under threat ecosystems. I spot the Transamazonica that we're planning to traverse sometime in 2021. And all of a sudden, the ground rises up. The Andes. I see the Altiplano, the salt pans, dust storms in the Atacama Desert, and one of the seven summits, Aconcagua with its almost 7,000 meters. Our goal to visit these incredible places has not changed, but we can't make too many plans. Everything is uncertain and we'll take it as it comes. And while I'm still at 11,000 meters altitude, Elena, coming from Sao Paulo, Brazil, already has her second PCR test done in Santiago Airport. It's Vincent there. I'm in the hotel. And here is Vincent coming. Can he see me? Vincent. Here. Here, you stupid ass. Let me come in. We are Elena and Vincent. We have converted a 4x4 Sprinter van to be our home on wheels and embarked on a trip around the world. From Patagonia to Canada, over to Eastern Siberia, and back to Europe via Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, and so much more. At least, that's the plan. The rest we'll find out. Here we'll share our experiences and observations from where we are, wherever that may be. In the last episodes, we left our car in Patagonia and went back to Europe due to Corona and the surgery that had to be done. The last couple of months, we waited for the Chilean borders to finally open again in order to return to our home. December 31st. From here in Santiago, it's one more plane and two buses south to finally see Frida, <laughs> our home again. I saw her, I saw her, I saw her. Oh, wow. Oh. Gracias. <laughs> When we arrive in Patagonia on the 31st of December, Chile Chico is under lockdown and we can't get to our car. Claudio and Jeanette, who have taken care of our van in Chile Chico for six months, drive the car onto the ferry south of the lake and leave the key with the captain who parks her by the harbor on the northern side of the lake. A few hours later, upon our arrival here, we pick her up and drive to our first camp. Once again, the help and support we receive here is incredible. These are the last two hours of 2020. <laughs> and without this help, we would spend today's New Year's Eve in a hotel instead of our beloved little home. This woman is everything to me. And being back together in our car, in our home, to restart this adventure is the best imaginable way to end 2020 and start 2021. And so the new year begins. We celebrate New Year's Eve as the first evening in our car and spend the next 10 days quarantining in the most beautiful little places. Getting used to living in a tiny space again and making sure that we're healthy before we meet our friends Christian and Denise who once again help us to continue our trip. But first, breakfast. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you a recipe of bread and eggs. It's a very special recipe. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. That was a joke, okay? <laughs> because I can't do that properly, so... Christ! Now what? You know, it's a very complex recipe, huh? This is the result. Ooh. 
We both had two PCR tests done for the flights, but to make sure we didn't catch anything on the plane and thus put our friends at risk, we self-quarantine before packing and driving Frida to Koyaike, where we finally meet Denise and Christian again. We arrive late and Denise recommends a little forest meadow on their land to park the car with only very few obstacles on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it. I'm, I'm scared. Wow. What a strong man, my people. What a strong man. <laughs> so our friends, they live there in this little... <laughs> What a hero, what a hero. And so we're gonna have a very nice place to sleep, close to our friends. <laughs> Look how pretty that I was driving away. The... <laughs> These lights help so much. They're so bright. I'm checking the situation up here from uh, last night's little excursion through the forest. Everything looks good. Those uh, off-grid tech panels, they've been working flawlessly, beautifully, and there's no scratch on them whatsoever. Now, we can't say the same for Frida. She's in need of some attention. 5,000 kilometers on bad washboard roads have destroyed parts of the front brake assembly. That's one way to do it. <laughs> so with the help of Christian, we install new brake carriers, discs, and things I don't know the English name of. Also, the mice destruction from last year means we have to replace CV joint and steering rod rubber, windscreen wiper system, all vacuum tubes of the turbocharger and reconnect the air mass sensor, which is tricky as the mice spit through the cable right at the connector. So Christian, just drill the screw. And put the cable. And now puts the cable in there. That's just genius. <laughs> it's okay. And indeed, it works perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> but we keep finding more problems. There is a new noise in Frida's repertoire. We have a leak in the steering gear and the servo pump is running dry. So people that travel with their cars know that part of traveling is repairing the car. So we came here to a friend of our friend and he was supposed to repair the, the handbrakes of Frida. And when he took the wheel apart, he discovered something bad. Yep, this is a bigger one. One of the rear leaf springs is broken in two, and all that holds the car up now is the connection with the axle. We can get the spare parts in Santiago, but we have to wait two weeks until they get here. It's late January, high summer, and while we wait for the spare parts to arrive, it actually starts to snow. And after just a couple of hours, the place looks like we experienced it in the middle of winter, when Denise and Christian provided us shelter and support on our way back to Europe. The spare parts have not arrived yet, but Denise and Christian invite us for a six-day road trip around Lago General Carrera, just in time for summer to return. It's seven in the morning and you put this big camera in front of my puffy face and make <laughs> me speak. Why don't you want to put your puffy face in front of the camera? <laughs> so, good morning. We just woke up and we've been invited by Christian and Denise, our very nice friends, um, to go on a little trip with them. So we fit the four of us, two dogs, two bikes and a kayak into their trusty Hilux and set out for some beautiful days on the road. And because we never properly introduced them, this is Denise. Remember their stunning house? She designed it. 
and this is Christian, our hero mechanic. Christian, look like a hero. And this is Babucho. Hey, my name is Babucho, and I like to eat poop. <laughs> then I lick, mm, then I lick. <laughs> Last year we lived four months by this lake. Now we finally get to see other views of it. We get to see water falling in slow motion. Surreal looking flooded forests. Glaciers hanging from the mountains. Cozy nights in our awesome new sleeping bags. Thank you so much for the support, Pajak. We can't wait to put these to proper use soon. Cold rainforests. Big ass leaves forming little mountain ranges. We explore the smallest little backcountry routes for beautiful camp spots. And most of all, we get to spend wonderful time together. Thank you guys. So yesterday one of the things that we did with them was to take a boat to visit the marble caves. They are caves of marble <laughs> and they are incredibly beautiful, so check it out, the scene from yesterday. These geological formations were sculpted over 6,000 years by waves washing out the marble and forming caves, pillars and tunnels. The sometimes smooth, sometimes beautifully textured walls reflect the lake's azure waters in a shimmering blue. And with some of these caves, it's even possible to paddle inside and really dive into these Gaudi-esque formations. Our little road trip with Christian and Denise comes to an end. And our car is finally ready to hit the road again. It's a beautiful seven-hour drive along the Carretera Austral South and the 265 East to Chile Chico. The 265 winds its way along the southern shore of the lake and offers breathtaking views in the late evening sun. It's wonderful to see Anne and Oscar, Amy and Valle again and to see their farm so full of life. Remember Anne from episode 9? She asked us to say hi to everyone who's watching. This time we're only staying briefly. We're headed to the Tompkins Conservation in nearby Patagonia National Park, where they expect to play with Nandu chicks for their rewilding project. They bought hay from Oscar to feed to the chicks and will gladly transport the first batch there. So we fixed three bales on the roof of Frida. The front runner stretch straps come in extremely handy. We say goodbye to Anne, Oscar, Amy and Valle and leave Bahia Hara and Chile Chico towards Patagonia National Park. This is it. So now that you're updated, we're happy to start with our regular episodes again. Because after five hours of driving south, we arrive in the National Park. We will not only deliver the hay, but also document the conservation's work over the next three weeks. We couldn't be more excited, and we can't wait to share this with you. <laughs>